Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to my presentation this, this time. I want this presentation to be as short as possible. If it means cutting it in segments, I'm going to cut it into small small segments of 15 minutes each. So I'll be discussing the pathograph. But before I discuss how to use a pathograph, I need to discuss what a pathograph is. Okay, so um, a pathograph is simply a tool that has been designed to assess the progress of labor. So as you assess the progress of labor, you assess the maternal well-being and the fetal well-being. Okay, so this tool has been used and uh, it's been very effective in uh, saving um, uh, lives during labor and it has been used it helps you detect any deviations from normal when labor is uh, becoming dangerous you, you this too is going to help you detect any danger signs during labor okay so um a pathograph has different components that we need to explain uh, the first part has uh, maternal details we have the name of the mother gravid para hospital number date of admission time of admission ruptured membranes in hours okay the time of ruptured membranes so um for gravid simply means the number of pregnancies that the woman has had para is the number of live children that the baby the, the woman has so you need to record here okay the next part of the pathograph is um, the fetal heart rate. It's the part where you record the fetal heart rate. It's used for recording fetal heart rate. So after you assess fetal heart rate, you record here. Okay. So uh, this part has got three, two highlighted lines. Two highlighted lines that are running parallel from each other. One is at 100, the other one is at 180. So the normal fetal heart rate is supposed to be between these two. Okay, some literature say supposed to be between 120 and 160. All right, so but it has to be between 100 and 180. So the fetal heart rate must be between these. So I'll show you how to record when uh, it comes to recording. Okay. The next part is uh, amniotic fluid. You need to uh, to Assess whether uh, uh, the amniotic fluid um, has uh, is meconium stained, is not meconium, is is uh, blood stained, or has old meconium stain. Okay, but uh, usually amniotic fluid may not be seen if the membranes are intact. So, uh, in case membranes are intact, you need to uh, record intact okay if membranes are intact and the amniotic fluid is clear you need to record with a c if they are blood stained you need to record with a b if they are meconium stained you need to record with an m okay so you record in these same boxes i'll show you how we do that and when to record marding is simply um the overlapping of fetal skull bones okay so the skull of the fetus has got sutures that you can easily feel so when uh, the fetus is descending the head is descending in the uh, down the birth canal um, molding may take place the uh, parietal bones of the skull may overlap and that may be an indication um that the birth canal is very small compared to the size of the head and it may be a sign of um, um cpd what we call cpd cephalopelvic disproportion okay if you discover that the overlapping is too much you need to take precautions then there is what we call cpd okay then um the next part we have cervical dilation cervical dilation and descent of the head 
So cervical dilation is done through vaginal examination and usually this is the determinant. This is what determines whether you have to start using the pathograph or not. So this tool is used, I forgot to mention this, this tool, the pathograph is used, is opened when the woman is in active stage of labor. And the woman usually is, uh, enters active stage of labor when the cervical dilation reaches 4 centimeters, okay? 4 centimeters, and that is when you open the pathograph. So you can open the pathograph when the cervical dilatation is 4 centimeters and above. That's when you open the pathograph. So in this uh, part, you know, we see the cervical dilation here, cervix, and descent of the fetal head. So plotting has been changed. Instead of crossing for, cerv for cervical dilation, you need to write this zero, O, okay? For, so plotting for cervical dilation is an O, is you draw O, or, uh, then for um, descent, of the head plot you you plot with the cross or an x this same one here okay so uh, in this this part is also has also some calibration from 0 to 10 and uh, you begin recording uh, from 4 centimeters and above for cervical dilation then descent of the fetal head begins from 5 going down okay so from 5 going down. Descent does not go up, it goes down. So I'll show you how you need to record that. Okay, so they go parallel. The um, direction is going up, the descent is coming down. Okay. And descent to begin from 5 centimeters coming down up to 0. So this part also has got two parallel lines uh, labeled a late line. And action line. Every time you are opening this pathograph, you open the pathograph, you start recording from the alert line. For example, if cervical dilation at the time we are examining this woman is at 5 centimeters, you need to open to start recording from 5 centimeters. If it's at 4 centimeters, you begin to start recording at 4 centimeters here. Okay, so you write your time there. Then a first hour, then you see you have to uh, circle there at four for cervical dilation. Then this is your first hour, so you start counting one, one hour, two hours, and just go like that. So if cervical dilation was at six, the time our initial at the time of our initial examination, we record here a cervical dilation, then we begin recording everything from here. Okay, so our first star is going to be here. We start going like that. Okay, so this is how we do this, but I'll explain more and show you how it is done. Um, this action line means um, you need to take action. It's either labor is prolonged. When you open from here, your graph must not reach this action line. It must not go beyond the action line. That tells you that it labor has prolonged and you need to take action so your graph can go on this side uh, above the alert line or below the alert line but it should not go beyond the action line okay then uh, labor you need to put in some intervention that's why it's an action line it's telling you to take action okay don't uh, sit uh, idly you need to take action the, the, yeah that's why this tool is very very important it it shows you exactly when you need to uh, take action because of because um, the woman is in danger or the fetus is in danger okay uh, when you uh, use it at, uh, appropriately the way it's supposed to be used it's, it's a very helpful tool then the next row we have hours here so you need to fill in some hours there the first hour when you open write first hour second third just like that okay uh that's where you record in these boxes you record the time at which you are doing those examinations so the distance from here to there it's one hour 
and from there to there is one hour okay from there to there is one hour and the distance between this and there is eight minutes eight minutes okay together 60 minutes which is one hour all right so I'll, I'll show you how these are important how we use this the next part is um, labeled contractions the 10 minutes so this is the part where you record your contractions and you know contractions you examine them from the fundus upon um, um, abdominal palpation okay so you record your contractions there contractions are of three types we have mild contractions moderate contractions and um, strong contractions so i'll show you how you need to record those types of contractions in these boxes okay the next part is for oxytocin um, if you administer any oxytocin it could be for augmentation of labor or um, acceleration of labor you need to record there okay could be for augmentation of labor or induction of labor you record in these boxes if you are given any other drugs like maybe for prophylaxis and biotics you record also in these uh, boxes down we have uh, maternal vital signs there is pulse and blood pressure you record them here and this calibrated from 60 to 180 okay then the next part is for temperature you record temperature in these boxes then for pro uh, for urine analysis when you do you when you do your analysis you need to record as well you need to record your analysis and we have um, uh, when, when, when you do your analysis, you concentrate on three aspects. You record the protein content of urine. If you find any, record proteins, presence of proteins. Acetone, record presence of acetone. Down here, there is volume. I know it's cutting, but there is volume, which is amount of urine that you have collected from the woman at that, at that moment. So you record it in this box here as well. Okay. Protein is important it will indicate that there is an issue in the glomerular filtration in the um, or the Bowman the Bowman's capsule there is an issue with the kidneys that needs attention acetones they indicate that the woman is starving and they need energy they need to be fed volume of urine will indicate whether the woman is hydrated or not okay thank you for listening and thank you for for watching this video i'll do the detailed one now where i will discuss the uh, how to record in the pathograph how to record the pathograph or how to fill in the pathograph so that we know how to use it